Yeah, well, like, I've always been known for, you know, defense, especially at USC. Um, I was also an offensive, like, a pretty good offensive player, too. Um, but just others, everyone on our team can score, you know? So it's like, sometimes your shots aren't falling, and I have a, a small role in terms of I don't have to produce 25 points per game to get a win or help my team win. I have other players on my team that can do that. Um, so it's just kind of impacting the game where I can, um, doing what I can. I know Oregon hasn't been known for great a defensive team, so just coming here and being able to step into that role and putting it on my shoulders and trying to be the best defensive way I can to, you know, feel the offense because you can, you know, impact the offense in different ways. Does it feel like he started to run different things defensively the last few weeks because you, you, they, they fit better for you or you can execute them at a different level than, than other players? Um, I would just more so say, like, press, pressing the other teams. I feel like just getting them um, out of their comfort zones and, you know, getting some time off the shot, shot clocks early in the um, in the game just so that, you know, we can have less time to defend in the half court because that's easier, obviously. Um, so I feel like that we've been thrown into a couple of offenses like zones and man and man and stuff like that. So it's been a lot, but it's been working, so it's playing our benefit. He did say there isn't much in the offense that's kind of called for you, mm -hmm. designed for you. Is that hard to swallow or are you liking this mm -hmm. role that you've carved out? Um, it's not hard to swallow just because, you know, our other players that are on the court with me, they draw so much attention, so that gives me the ability to be able to create and do do my own thing, get to the, do the basket, get fouled, get the free throw line or whatever like that. So, I mean, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. Um, my teammates play well, I play well, when we get a win, I'm happy, so it doesn't really matter how many plays are called for me. Incentive to get some steals to create some Yeah, get some, st get some steals, get some transition opportunities, get my teammates open, so other other ways to be happy with my performances besides, you know, plays being called. I was gonna say on the flip side of that is it kind of nice to not have to be yeah. the sole offensive mm -hmm. performer for your team they got to rely on you to get 25 to win yeah for sure I mean it's 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 really different coming from a team where I was kind of like the focus point and I had to do what I had to do every single game to be able to help the team try to get a win um, now I knew coming here was gonna be like a lesser role like I said earlier but I mean it's cool for me I, I know that my teammates do what they have to do and I do what I have to do and then it's like we still win so it's like I can't really be bad. I'm really happy that we won, you know. <laughs> Are you like consciously able to devote more energy to your defense because you know you might not have to expend so much offensively? Yeah, kind of. Throughout the season, that how as it's going on, I've started to realize that more. Like at first, I wasn't as, I I mean, you guys probably watched a couple of games. I wasn't as, you know. Uh, was so, like physical on the defensive end and stuff like that because I was like let me conserve myself for later in the game but it's like now I don't really have to do that you know I'm going from a team where I play 38.5 minutes per game to a team where I'm playing 25 so when I'm out there I have to give everything I can and I feel like that's starting to come along as the season goes on. Have you been in contact at all with any old teammates at USC or coaches or what's um, been like? No, not really. <laughs> just because, uh, I mean, I talked to my head coach here and there. Um, just the season's super, you know, busy, so they're doing their own season. We're doing ours. But I talked to our head coach. I'm really close with him. I really can't wait to see him. Um, other, there's only three people that were on my team last year. So, you know, a couple of them are injured. So just doing my own thing. It's going to be different seeing them, but I'm really excited to be able to go back to Galen Center and play for one last time. What's anticipation like, though, of, of seeing some familiar faces, probably not just on the team, but people around the program? Um, I'm really excited just because, like, I was really close to the fans and the donors that came to our games for three years, and they really supported me, and they still supported me in my decision. So being able to go back th there and thank them um, one last time, it feels amazing, honestly. Not a lot of players get to transfer and then play in their, you know, alma mater for a la their last time, um, playing in Los Angeles, um, USC versus UCLA. So it's going to be awesome seeing my coaches, old coaches, and seeing you know the fans. It'll be cool. It'll be weird, but it'll be cool. <laughs> no doubt you're appreciative of that experience. Was it fair oh, to say so you feel pretty comfortable with the way things are working out this year? Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I needed those three years to become the player that I am today. Without those three years, I wouldn't be the player I am. And I learned so much, and I got to be myself and grow as a person, not only on the basketball court, but also off the court, get my education, you know, get my undergrad there. And so it's amazing. Um, and now everything's coming along here. Everything that kind of my my goals and my attempt, my initial um, decision to come here is all coming true, so it's all working out. You talk about playing at the Galen Center, mm -hmm. but you played at Pauley in a different atmosphere with the rivalry of yeah. UCLA. Is it going to be weird now playing for Oregon uh, <laughs> in kind of a UCLA rivalry? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be it's be weird just because I have different colors and I'm with a different team. Um, but I still look at them like a rival. Uh, Oregon State's little beat UCLA a, bit, a little bit more on the rivalry this year, but they're still a rival in my eyes. And obviously they're coming into this 
competition as a top 10 team and so it's either even more at stake so I'm really excited for this matchup at Poly but it'll be weird yeah this whole weekend will be weird. <laughs> you guys been anticipating this one as a group the UCLA game given the mm -hmm. kind of season they're they're putting together? Have you been anticipating this matchup? Um, yeah, I feel like we really have done a good job doing one game at a time. Um, we have a dynamic conference, and we're playing top 15, top 10 teams every single weekend. And so we do look forward to big games like this, but at the same time, I feel like each game means a lot. So we focused on Arizona's last week, and now we have UCLA and USC coming up. So now we're going to focus on that in practice this week. How that important is that to explain why? You talk about facing all these top teams. Mm -hmm. You're crushing them. I mean, you're winning by 30 against mm -hmm. top 10 teams. How important is that mentality that you were just talking about to accomplishing that? Yeah, because it's, it's really easy to look at long-term goals. Um, and so our coaching staff has really done a good job just saying, like, you know, this is a new week. And then when we accomplish those goals, it's like, all right, now put that in the past. And now we have to move on to these new schools. Because there's no rest in this conference. There's not going to be rest for the rest of the season. So it's really important and really vital because you can try and, you know, skip forward to the game after. And then, you know, you slip up and lose a game that you're not supposed to lose. And then it's like, now you really have to look at yourself. So. So just focusing on the game and whatever we have at hand, and we've been doing a really good job at that and beating teams by 30. So it seems like a rest, but it's really not. <laughs> on that note, what's this 10-game stretch kind of been like for you guys? Mm -hmm. You've done like what, six, seven top 25 teams, yeah. another top 10 team coming. I mean, it's just, does this get exhausting after a little it while? It gets a little exhausting. I mean, KG did a tweet, I think, earlier today, and I saw his, you know, the our last 10 games and it is it's truly amazing how our teams really come together after that bounce back loss from Arizona State and and brought it together and now we're you know we're doing great things and it's really just feeling putting fuel for the fire like later on for the season um, but it's exhausting but I mean when you win it kind of makes it easier I guess. <laughs> you know, what's it been like playing with Sabrina and playing mm -hmm. against her versus when you were at USC and, and how different is it and how much better do you know her? Yeah, so I mean, I knew Sabrina before mm -hmm. coming in here, and so playing with her, it was one way, and then playing against her, it's like, gotta play against Sabrina in that school again, you know? But now it's really cool. I'm learning a lot from Sab, and I'm really grateful that I get to play with her her last college season. Her, Ruthie, Satu, everybody on our team are amazing players, and it's been nothing short of a blessing. So I'm really excited to be playing with her, and whatever she has going on next next year in her future career. What's it like in practice? Mm -hmm. What's she like in practice? Goofy. Goofy but focused. Sabrina has two sides, so she's you know, she's a fun person. You know, we're great friends off the court, but at the same time she she knows she has to be focused. And she knows what it takes to win. That's why we've been so successful. What's it like going against her in practice? Going against her, I mean we push each other. Sometimes we're on the same team. Yeah. Actually most of the time we're on the same yeah. team, but um, she makes me better. I make her better. Um, she is a great offensive player, so I get to have that, you know, practice for when mm -hmm. we play great point guards in the league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're known for your defense. Now you at USC, and then now with Coach Campbell, kind of like the head of the defense. Mm -hmm. How's it different, and what's he learned from him? Coach Campbell, I love him. I love. I call him MC. MC. Um, MC yeah, MC. <laughs> um, he's awesome, though. He's a he's a great defensive and offensive coach. But his focus is defense. So I've worked hand in hand with him throughout the year, and he's just said, you know, be yourself, play like you played at USC, be that aggressive defensive player that you've always been. And so he's really great with the X's and O's, and he's taught us a lot of defensive schemes. He gets on our butts, and that's how we push to become better players. So I mean, I love Mark. All right. Thanks. Mm-hmm.